No niin. Um, so I'm, I'm going to talk about some of the biomechanics of the regular fixators uh, that you use and also uh, a little more about the biomechanics of the Elizarov because after all of these things have, <laughs> have uh, failed, you use your bone augmentation, use bone graft, use ultrasound, use electrical stimulation, ultimately for your non-union, you will have to come to the Elizarov. So better understand a little about the uh, biomechanics. So what is the um, Elizarov classically? What we say is the Elizarov is a small wire fixator which is sort of uh, circumferential in design with smooth and tensioned wires. But nowadays we more or less uh, tend to use more of a hybrid fixator. <laughs> so the question here is what is optimal um, stability? Just putting in a lot of rings and a lot of um, pins or wires is not necessarily the optimal stability. There are many variables that come into play uh, in case of all fixators and we are going to try and see how we can ensure the optimal stability because optimal stability is not rigidity. Rigidity is not a good word in today's uh, day and age. It is an undesirable kind of uh, stability. There is one instability which is desirable that is axial controlled micro motion. Right? All the other kinds of instability that is angular bending, shear front to back or side to side as well as torsion or rotation are undesirable forms of stability. So you have this whole spectrum of stability from very unstable to rigid. <laughs> unstable is a fracture which is not stabilized at all and rigid is what used to happen with the earlier kind of uh, delta frames etc or even with, with uh, very very rigid fixation, internal fixation that we used to do. Nowadays we are at this area where generally speaking with intramedullary nails, with bridging plates etc, we are aiming for secondary union with callus, we are not aiming for uh, primary osteonal union. So if you look at a uniplanar fixator, uh, you can look at that one uh, in the plane of the fixator and second perpendicular to the plane of the fixator, third in the axial direction. So here on right on, on your left side, you see the fixator which is in the plane of the screen. Uh, in the middle you see the fixator which is sort of oriented perpendicular to the plane of the screen and on the right side you are seeing an axial view of the same fixator. <coughs> All fixators which are monolateral are effectively cantilever uh, fixators. They have this cantilever effect where this end of the pin is fixed and even if there is axial micro motion or movement of this uh, fragment, it is always around a point which is here. So there is a, never any true up and down movement, it is always accompanied by a little amount of rotation which are, occurs around uh, this point. So these, the, the words which you see in green are, are the good sort of things and what you see in red are the bad things. So here in this kind of uh, fixator, in the plane of the fixator, the shear between the two fragments is minimal. There are axial movements which is a good thing, but this is accompanied in variable degrees with bending. So to cut down this bending, the next sort of evolution of a unilateral fixator was to get a uniplanar bilateral where you extend the pin across and put another rod on this side. But the problem, the, the good thing about this was bending movements were minimized. But the bad thing is that axial movements are also minimized. <laughs> now if you look at 90 degrees to the plane of the fixator, the bending movements are less, there is some amount of um, shear and axial movement is negligible. If you look at these two, you will, you will find that in the plane of the fixator and perpendicular to the plane of the fixator, the stabilities and the instabilities are exactly the opposite of each other, <laughs> which led to this trial to, to try to increase the stability of the fixator by putting in two frames at 90 degrees to each other, what was known as 
the delta frame you put in two unilateral fixators in a plane of 90 degrees to each other whereby each cancelled out the other's instability but this was the fixator which led to the bad sort of name for a fixator as a non-union uh, machine this required a complicated gradual destabilization there are other uh, variables which you probably already know some of them being the distance from the bone therefore you try and get your fixator rods as close to the bone as possible as allowed for your soft tissue uh, swelling and so soft tissue dressing etc the thickness of the pin which goes into the bone the thickness of the connecting rod or the diameter of the connecting rod and probably the most important is the concept of fracture gap which I'll come to later which is internal stability <laughs> today you have dynamic uniplanar fixators which basically are axially unstable by design they are very very rotationally uh, stable angularly stable because of this dovetail kind of design but these clamps can slide up and down and they are you know you, you can do a controlled amount of um, axial instability with these um, fixators so they take away some of the problems of uniplanar fixators now one sort of big difference between the Elizarov and other or standard fixators is uh, the concept of linear and non-linear stiffness in a Elizarov fixator as you take more and more um, weight the amount of displacement increases initially till it reaches a kind of plateau with almost all other uniplanar or, or uh, non circular fixators the amount of displacement will keep increasing in a linear fashion as you increase the amount of load and why is the Elizarov uh, more stable than the others first of all because it is circumferential so you have you know uh, four points of fixation all around the uh, clock face the Elizarov works as an I-beam that is the wire which which goes from one end to the other is stabilized both on this end as well as this end and therefore it can only go up and down without any angular motion being a, a thin wire so this allows actually for a better axial micro motion and all the other uh, stabilities of bending torsion and shear is actually equal if not more than any other fixator configuration so <laughs> for for uh, sort of long term use probably the Elizarov is a good fixator for short term where you just want to tide over a, a short period till internal fixation it probably probably doesn't make a difference <clears throat> the second question is what is this axial micro motion what is axial micro motion and what is macro motion studies show that probably less than one millimeter displacement at maximum load is the outer limit of axial micro motion within that you will get an osteogenic response more than that uh, you are not going to get an osteogenic response <laughs> So with the Elizarov, there are a lot of variables that will affect the stability. We tension wires, you remember with the Elizarov and the reason for that these 1.8 mm wires, when they are tensioned, the stiffness of the wire and therefore the stability of the wire increases. So all wires with an Elizarov uh, fixator are usually at least tensioned starting from 70 to about 120 kilograms why do we tension up to 120 kilograms the answer for that is in the strength of a 1.8 wire that there is a certain point at which it breaks okay and another point at which it will yield that is instead of plastic de deformation uh, instead of elastic deformation you will have a plastic deformation and that usually occurs at about 250 uh, kilograms so we take a safe limit of 50 percent of that yield point which is about 120 kilograms um, it's a good idea to 
tension these wires only with a dynamometric tensioner and not with the um, other Rush Russian method that is shown except in case of um, emergency. Your crossing angle of the wires they should be crossing ideally at 1990 but almost never in real life you can get this crossing in 1990. So you should have at least a 30 degree crossing angle in between these two wires uh, to allow for a reasonable amount of stability. You can use wires off the ring to increase the bending stability of your um, fixator. You can use olive wires which increase the resistance to shear. Also in terms of the, the kind of pins that we use today we tend to use still I think 4.5 and uh, 5 mm pins for long term usage for long term re retention especially when you want to use it for any kind of reconstructive um, purpose. It is a good idea to use 6 mm pins because with each increase in, in the diameter there is a geometric increase you already know about this from your use of intramedullary nails you know the 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 stability of a 10 mm nail is geometrically increased compared to a 9 mm nail. It is not just that 1 mm of a diameter and same thing happens with um, same thing happens with a 6 mm pin. Now one would argue that the I beam effect is lost that is true the hybrid frame is less stable than the uh, classical Elizara frame but clinically there has been no real difference in terms of the healing. <laughs> and finally, uh, you have to also look at the bone factors where uh, you want this is something which you already you know you utilize very frequently with, with uh, standard fixators also where you want to be as far away from the bone as possible and as sorry as far away from the fracture as possible and as close to the fracture as possible. This is the concept of spanning the fragment you have to hold as much of the fragment as you can with your fixation. In an Elisarov you can use it, uh, you can use one ring with a drop wire, you can use two rings and you can use one ring with two drop wires. The best is to use two rings but many a time whenever uh, sort of it is not possible to use uh, two rings because of considerations of size you can always use uh, one ring and one drop wire. This kind of a configuration generally should not be used. Thank you.